time for another reaction video in the case of Sarah Boone, the one who called 911 and said that she put her boyfriend, George Torres, into her suitcase, zipped him up in there, then went upstairs, went to bed, came back 12 hours later, and found him dead in her suitcase. And then we later learned that she actually took videos of him begging to get out, and she refused to let him out of the suitcase. Okay, so it was a crazy week. Uh, last week in the Sarah, Sarah Boone, the trial against Sarah Boone for um, second degree murder. So the trial was supposed to begin on October the 7th of 2024. And I was really hoping that it would, but even Mother Nature granted Sarah another delay in her trial. So, which hurricane? Hurricane Milton caused the delay in Sarah's trial in Orlando, Florida. So, it is being delayed until the following Monday. Not o October 7th, but the following Monday. I don't know that date. A couple more days from now. So, I just can't believe Mother Nature coming to help Sarah Boone out. That was pretty crazy and unexpected. And, okay, but the thing that really surprised me was, I believe it was Tuesday, so October the 8th, yeah, October the 8th, 2024, the state of Florida, the prosecution in this case, they came up with a new motion. They filed a new motion against Sarah Boone, and I believe what they're saying is that in order for Sarah Boone to claim battered spouse defense or battered women's defense, that she's going to have to get up on the stand and testify that she she um, murdered her boyfriend intentionally. That's what I believe they're trying to say here. That it, if she's going to say it was self-defense, she can't also claim that it was an accident. She's going to have to say that she did it intentional, intentionally. And we know for almost five years now, she's been saying that it was unintentional, that it was an accident. So this is going to be very interesting. They're trying to get her to say what happened. And in this motion, the prosecution um, tells something about, let me see how I can word this. So they're saying that Sarah was interviewed by, or I don't know if she was maybe diagnosed or something, by two mental health experts, one for the defense and one for the prosecution. And she gave a new version of events to these two doctors, to these two mental health doctors. And so this, in this um, motion, they're talking about the new version of events that she gave. So I want to I want to react to that, and I have a huge reaction. I'm really shocked. I want to see if I'm the only one. Okay, let's get this started here. So this guy here, he's going to be talking about what this motion is about. <clears throat> States motion in limine to exclude battered spouse syndrome evidence or exclude mention of battered spouse syndrome evidence until the defendant testifies to a justifiable use of deadly force. Well, that. Okay, so if you can. What I believe that they're saying is that they want Sarah to testify before she's a allowed to use the battered spouse syndrome as her defense. You know, I don't think it actually is the defense. It's actually self-defense is what she's claiming, but because of being a battered spouse. So I think what they're really saying is they want her to change her testimony. That is not an accident anymore and that she did it on purpose. Now, I did not know what this word meant. Lemony. And I thought, you know... That's a nice sounding word. I guess it's a Latin word. I had to go look it up. So let's find out together what it means. Definition of limini. Limini is a Latin term that means at the threshold or 
on the onset. In the context of law, it refers to a preliminary decision made by a judge before or during a trial. This decision is made outside the presence of the jury and is also known as a motion in limine. A motion in limine is a request to the judge to exclude certain evidence or testimony from a trial. It can be used in both civil and criminal proceedings and at the state and federal levels. Okay. Well, if that clears it up for you, I basically, from my understanding, they're saying that this motion is not going to be seen by the jury. So it's basically for the judge. That's the way I understood it. If y'all understood it differently, let me know. But anyway, let's go ahead and listen to him some more. Mouthful. So let's take a step back and remember what happened in the previous state's motion with respect to battered spouse. What happened then was there was a notice of intent that was filed and then an amended notice of intent that was filed by the defense to rely on battered spouse syndrome. The way it works in Florida is that if you want to rely on battered spouse syndrome evidence, then you have to file a notice of intent at least 30 days before trial and you need to include certain things in the notice. So certain requirements and the state felt that the defense in this case they filed this notice, but it was deficient. And therefore, they moved to strike that notice of intent as deficient. And even the amended notice of intent, they also moved to strike that as deficient as well. Now, the judge ruled on that, and the judge ruled that, no, the notice of intent was fine, and therefore, they could rely on battered spouse syndrome. So that motion was denied. This is a different motion. This is not a motion to strike their notice of intent as deficient. This is a motion that even if they could potentially argue better spouse syndrome, they still should be excluded from mentioning it until the defendant testifies to a justifiable use of deadly force. Okay, so this is this is a motion. Lemony, the previous motion. Okay. So I'm still understanding this to mean that um, the defendant, Sarah Boone, she has to testify that she intended to kill, to use deadly force on George Torres, you know, in her suitcase that night. So once she testifies to that, then they can use the battered spouse in conjunction with the self-defense. That's the way I'm understanding this. So they're not saying she can't use it. They're saying she has to testify first. She has to change her testimony. It's a motion to strike the notice of intent. We did a video on that also. If you haven't seen that, definitely go check that out. It'll explain everything and put this motion a little bit better in, in better context. Okay, so there's a bunch of legal stuff, legal talking, um, until we get to about 10 minutes. And right now we're at three minutes. So I'm going to fast forward to the part that I found the most shocking about this motion. It's Sarah's new version of events. I think it was around 10 minutes. So let me look here. I think it's number 10. Every other day of the year, you could have been justified in using deadly force. But if on this particular day, when you decided to use deadly force, the decedent did not do anything to make you feel that way, that a reasonable person would, would interpret is putting your life at danger, then you are not allowed to act in self-defense. So here we go. According to the defendant, when she and the decedent woke up, the decedent wanted to drink alcohol. She did not. So in order to destroy... That part just makes me sick. She knows that's a blatant lie. If anybody wanted to drink alcohol, it was Sarah Boone. I mean, she has no problem lying under oath. She thinks it's totally fine. I think she ought to spend life in prison for that alone. Make an example out of her. The decedent, she, she su suggested that they instead clean the defendant's Tom home, which they did. So now they are referring to what she told the doctors. Okay, so 
They woke up. Okay, so she said that um, she didn't want to drink alcohol, so she decided that they needed to clean the townhome, and that's what they did. Well, I can tell you she did not clean the carpet. We saw videos of the carpet, and it looked horrible. Horrific. Hey, her and Jorge, and they wanted to, he wanted to drink alcohol, but she didn't. So to distract him, they decided, you know, let's clean the house. And they cleaned the house. Well, guess what happened after they finished cleaning the house? At the conclusion of the cleaning, the decedent still wished to consume alcohol. So the two of them began consuming alcohol. So they started drinking after they finished cleaning the house. The defendant did not want to consume alcohol, but she did so to placate the defendant. They no, Sarah didn't want to consume alcohol. She's perfect. Didn't you hear her say that repeatedly? Many, many times, probably throughout her whole entire life. She is perfect. She didn't want to drink alcohol. All that they consumed was a Chardonnay bottle by Woodridge. In order to prevent the decedent from becoming sad or upset, she kept him diverted by smoking cigarettes with him, drinking, enjoying each other's company, perhaps using the dartboard on her porch and doing arts and crafts and puzzles. So that's what she was trying to do in order to prevent him from becoming sad or upset and uh, drinking with him and smoking with him and, and trying to play certain games. Although it apparently would upset the decedent, the defendant suggested he call his daughter, who did not like talking to him when he was drinking, or that he call his brother to tell his brother that the decedent had dragged the defendant down the stairs the night before. So, I don't believe that <laughs> that was the reason that George called his brother Juan that night. Um, because we heard Juan, yeah, we heard from Juan that... Um, George just called to talk to him and they were just having a normal conversation until Sarah came and interrupted about four minutes into the conversation saying, um, you know, I need my phone back. I need to call my brother. And while you're on the phone with your brother, you need to tell him what you did to me. So I don't think that was the reason that George actually called one, but that's the way it's worded here. What they're saying here is that Sarah Boone suggested that Jorge call Jorge's brother to tell his brother that Jorge dragged Sarah Boone down the stairs the night before. Now, why he would want to do that, I don't know. But this is, again, probably what you're just saying, that Sarah... Okay, so does anyone else have a have an issue with the words dragged her down the stairs? I mean, how do you drag someone down the stairs? Wouldn't gravity just automatically pull them down the stairs? I, I don't understand that. How do you drag someone down the stairs? I, to me, that's just more lies. Or how does uh, Judge Cranick say it? I don't know. He has a special way of saying that she's lying. She's not being credible or something like that. Told the experts. Having done these playful activities for numerous hours, there came a point where the defendant and the decedent were sitting on her couch in the downstairs living room, and the decedent tagged her and said, you're it. From past games of hide-and-seek, the defendant understood this to mean that he wanted to play hide-and-seek. <laughs> I wonder how she got that. Okay. She begrudgingly engaged in this game, as with everything else, to play get the decedent. So he said, you're it which generally is, I guess, a game of tag. But she understood that to mean that he wants to play hide-and-seek. So she said, okay, fine, even though I guess we're both adults, we'll play this game of hide-and-seek. She ran up to the shower. After becoming cold and perhaps some misunderstanding about the rules of hide-and-seek, she left the shower upstairs and returned downstairs to find the decedent placing himself in a suitcase to hide. At the See, that story is different also. So she told the doctors, the mental health experts, that, um, what did she say? She found George placing himself in a suitcase to hide. So in her 911 call, in the very beginning, she said that she put George into a suitcase. And then in her, when was it? Oh, I think it was in the interrogation where she said she left the shower. She got tired of hiding in the shower because he, George wasn't looking for her. And when she came out, she saw him messing around with the suitcase. And now that's changed to 
he placed himself inside the suitcase. I don't believe that either. I think that's just more lies. I think her very first statement to 911 that she put him in the suitcase, I think that was the truth. But I don't think she intended to tell the truth, as she would say. Not intentional. And you got to do the knee slap at the same time. Not intentional. Okay. Of his death, the decedent was only 103 pounds and had a blood alcohol level of 0.138 very, very drunk. The defendant saw him doing this and decided to zip the suitcase shut while the decedent was inside it. They were both laughing and there was still no animus between them on this day. The defendant says she did not zip it completely shut. The decedent was able to poke a couple fingertips through the gap left by the zipper. And then the decedent said he could not breathe. So now all of a sudden the game is not... You see, I don't believe that they were both laughing when she put George into the suitcase because according to the neighbor, the neighbors, Vinny and Brandon, they both heard uh, Sarah and George arguing before they heard something slam down the stairs. So I believe they were arguing before Sarah put George into the suitcase. And I think she pushed him down the stairs while he was inside the suitcase. So since they were already arguing at this point, I don't believe that they, that George was laughing about being put in the suitcase. I think she hit him with the baseball bat. And that's how she got him in there. She might have knocked him out. I'm not sure. We'll probably never know. So funny anymore. The decedent obviously got mad about not being able to breathe. The decedent's getting mad made the defendant get mad. This reminded... Okay, we we heard the videos of George in the suitcase. Did he sound mad to any of you? He didn't to me. He sounded desperate. Desperate to be able to live. To be able to breathe. Uh, her Her story just gets even more absurd every time she comes up with a new story it just becomes more unbelievable and absurd and disgusting of the past the violence the decedent committed against her causing her to be unable to breathe at those times this made her angry the defendant shook the suitcase she lost control and the suitcase flipped she okay that's a major difference there so she said that she got mad because George got mad that he couldn't breathe. So she went up and shook the suitcase and her shaking it caused it to flip. Now, how would that even be possible? The suitcase has 100 pounds in it. 103 pounds is what George weighed at the time of his death. So how could she just shake it and it just flips over accidentally? That's just ridiculous. And in her police station interrogation, she said, I flipped it. I flipped it. She said that a whole bunch of times. So now it was just, it accidentally turned over while she was shaking the suitcase. Good grief, this is absurd. But there's worse to come. The decedent's fingertips with the wooden baseball bat that was in the room. Okay, that part was the most shocking to me. Because I was saying when I saw that search warrant and it had that baseball bat on there, I said, I bet you this baseball bat had some DNA or some, some blood or evidence on it. And that's why they took it into evidence. And finally, we get confirmation. Sarah admitted that she hit George's fingers when he stuck them out of the hole in the suitcase, she hit his fingers with the wooden baseball bat. I mean, can you imagine how painful that would be? I mean, you couldn't be drunk enough to not feel that pain. I don't think. I mean, and if she were going to hit his fingers with a wooden baseball bat, what else would she hit on him? See, and that just makes me think that... I could be right about her hitting him in the head because you know he had blunt force trauma to his head in his autopsy. So I think I'm right about her hitting him in the head with the baseball bat. 
And she probably hit the suitcase with him in it. I mean, I, I'm actually looking forward to hearing about what other injuries that he had because that would kind of confirm. I mean, looking forward to it's not the right words. But you know what I'm talking about. Like, I just don't know how many injuries she actually inflicted on him. I mean, what a terrible thing to do. Just admitting that she hit his fingers with the baseball bat is terrible, you know. And they'll go on to say that was aggravated assault, aggravated battery. You know, I think aggravated means that she used a weapon. That's the way it, what it means to me anyway. Now, after having committed the independent... Oh, yeah, I was going to rewind that so we can hear that again about Sarah hitting George's fingers with the baseball bat. She lost control and the suitcase flipped. She hit the decedent's fingertips with the wooden baseball bat that was in the room. Now, after having committed the independent forcible felonies of aggravated assault, aggravated battery, and the non-forcible felony of for false imprisonment, so locking him in... This is another thing that I called. I said, you know, even if George had not died, she still ought to be charged with false imprisonment. You know, you can't just put someone in a confined space like that and hold them there against their will. You know, that's a crime too. And so anyway, I was kind of proud of myself because I, I called that false imprisonment charge. The suitcase is false imprisonment. The defendant believed the decedent would kill her. Okay, so after she did all this, now she felt, you know, if he gets out of that suitcase, he's gonna kill me. Despite believing that the decedent would kill her, the defendant flipped the suitcase over so it was right side up, and she believed the decedent would be able to let himself out. So now she's saying, well, I flipped the right side over so that now he's able to get out. See, every time I hear her say or see her in writing say that she believed that George would be able to get himself out of the suitcase, she is just admitting that she had no intention of letting him out. Even though he was begging her to, she had no intention to let him out. So she's just saying, no, I didn't let him out. I thought he was going to let himself out. So that's on him. Just like she said in their videos. The defendant's specific intent was for the decedent to feel like what it was like for her to choke and not be able to breathe. So that's what she meant to do. She wanted him to feel what I guess sometimes she feels when he's choking her and that she's not able to breathe. She, you know what? This story might have some validity to it if she hadn't had a history of choking her lovers. She did the same thing to Brian Boone. So, I mean, according to Brian Boone, she choked him all the time too when she would get drunk and violent. So I don't believe her when she's saying that um, that George was choking her and whatever, whatever it is that she, that she was only doing this to George, like trying to keep him from breathing because he had done that to her. And I really think, you know, if George did that to her, it could have been self-defense. You know, she might have been attacking him, but she has a history of not wanting her lovers to breathe and going for their throats and trying to strangle them. She was actually charged with, um, was it a felony strangulation charge that time that she was arrested? I think that was in 2018 that she was arrested for battery against George. Ended for him to feel this for two minutes and believed he would let himself out. And when that happened, if she died, she died. So, meaning if he would go and kill her, then okay, she would just be dead. She did not intend to kill him and she did not believe that leaving the decedent in the predicament she placed him in would kill him. His death was an accident. Okay, so this is what her story is. So she's trying to mix in and weave in this whole fear that she was actually in fear for her life because if he gets out of that suitcase then he would come and kill her 
But at the same time, she thought that he was able to get out, which would mean that the death was an accident because she assumed that he's able to get out. Okay, so that seems to be what her story was to the doctors. All right, so now what is the legal basis for them to be seeking to exclude this battered spouse syndrome? This is always... Okay, so this is a bunch more um, legal talking, and it's very confusing to me, but they're just referencing other cases where the defendant claimed a battered spouse syndrome and, you know, what you have to be able to prove to use that defense. And really none of it applies to Sarah. You know, she just, she's too much the aggressor. So I really hope that she does get up and testify and change her testimony and say, oh yeah, well, I did mean to do it after all. You know, because I want to, you know, there would be some kind of satisfaction in that for me. But another thing that people aren't really talking about is that Sarah had her birthday right after this motion was filed on Tuesday. Tuesday wasn't her birthday, but her birthday was on 10-10, as she always says, October the 10th. And I believe this was filed on October the 8th of 2024. So she got to spend another one of her birthdays in jail, which I think she actually likes jail. And I think that's why she keeps trying to delay her um, her trial is because she doesn't want to leave the Orange County Jail. I think she wants to stay there close to Brian and Lucas so they can come visit her and bring her things. So I think, you know, in Sarah's mind, when she goes to prison, she's not going to have her group of girls that are in prison with her that she's probably manipulated into doing whatever she wants. So I think she's not wanting to leave Orange County Jail. But I have heard that prison is a lot easier on criminals than jail is. So she'll probably do just fine in prison. And I really hope she gets life, you know, life in prison because I just can't imagine that any, at least her lovers, I don't believe her lovers would be safe around her ever. The way that she's had a history of not wanting her lovers to breathe. I mean, that's very dangerous to society. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and link this video that we're reacting to. I'm going to link that in the comments at the very top. I'll pin it. So let me, let me know what y'all think about this. Is this shocking to you? Because it was shocking to me that Sarah admitted that she hit George while he was in the suitcase with a baseball bat. I just could not believe that when I heard it the first time. Let me know what y'all think. Okay, that's the end of the video.